Bamford Morris comes in now. AQHA Reserve Pole Bending Champion in 2018 and 2019. The 2022 AQHA World Champion Stakes Race from the Bluegrass State of Kentucky. What's up, Misfits, and welcome to another training episode. This one was highly requested amongst YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, all my social medias, um, about how to get a snappier turn on your barrel horse. Now, I will preface this by saying, if you do not have control of that horse's body, meaning their shoulder, their rib cage, and their hip, if you do not have control of all those independent parts or all those parts together, then this is going to be very difficult to achieve because step one in getting a snappier turn, you have to have a good approach. If you do not have a good approach, the backside of your barrel is not going to come together. So how we teach these horses to approach a barrel properly is first we do a lot of dry work um, now what dry work is for me is getting these horses off the pattern um, and doing things that are going to help them on the pattern so for instance rip here he's a three-year-old um, he is what i'm hoping is going to be a rodeo hopeful um, at least as a backup horse. I know my mare Evie, if you are anything familiar with my channel, you know Evie is the main thing that I talk about on this channel. She's the main horse in all my vlogs. But Rip here, he is her genetically half sibling. Same sire, different mama. According to AQHA, they're not. But according to me, you know, they are. So anyway, <clears throat> Rip here, he's a three-year-old. He will start his show career at the end of this year, beginning of next year. It just kind of depends on how well he progresses. But... In order to get a proper approach on these barrels is you have to have control of their nose, control of their shoulder, control of their rib, and control of their hip. Now, Rip here, as you can see, he's maintaining, oops, sorry, I gave him the wrong command there. He's maintaining a nice, nice circle. He's got his nose where it should be. He's walking, but I can feel him pulling with his front end and driving from his hip. That is step one to get a good circle going around a barrel. And as you can see, he's doing it with very little effort from me because I want my horses, oh, I want my horses to be able to work automatically without me getting all up in their business because the most efficient horse, the most efficient run is going to be one where you get out of the horse's way. You are just there as a passenger. You're there to help guide if and when necessary. That's how at least I like to train my horses. Um, so Rip here. Now I've got control of his shoulder. I can, I can push his shoulder over. I can push his shoulder over. Oh. He's a little stickier on this part, but I can push his rib cage and his hip over. And all this is going to be so important when it comes to uh, 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 being circled by bombers. All this is important when it comes to teaching them the approach on their barrels. Now, these horse flies. Now, a lot of people, what you will see when they say they have to really hold their horses off, a lot of what happens, and I'm going to do this on this side of the barrel, make it a little easier for you all to see, but... A lot of times, imagine this is your second barrel coming in. What they're doing, instead of shaping them up to come around the barrel, and as you can see, he's turning it nicely. Instead of doing this, what are they doing? Oh, they're doing, they're pulling their head to the outside. They're getting up here. He's confused because he knows not to do this. They're getting up here, turning their head to the outside, and then they're going to yank him over and see what that does. Now I'm all messed up back here. What happens is you end up probably knocking this thing over to begin with. But also, you're all bent out of shape. Their body is turned in the wrong direction. So instead of them really coming in on this hip, they're coming in on this shoulder. And what that does, all of a sudden now you're going to dive that horse in. You're going to make them leave that barrel wide. And then you're going to have a nice long long look at the grandstands going to the third barrel these bombers there you go so how we do this imagine i'm coming in about right here imagine i'm coming into the second barrel i'm going to bump this inside rein use my inside leg i'm going to ask him to stay straight and then when my leg is even with the barrel keep that shape 
all the way around, and then we can go off to say our third is over here. Oh, that's the proper way to do it. And while your horse is going around this barrel, again, you want them to pull from their shoulder and push from their hip. So this drill that I really like to do, and this is something he's a little sticky on, so I really wanted to show you guys on him versus Evie, because Evie's already pretty solid in this drill. But Rip here, he's going to be more of an accurate representation of what your horse is probably going to do. Because another issue that you're going to find with these horses as they're um, leaving the barrel, they elevate their head. What that does is that gets their body out of shape, just as shoulder down and their head cocked to the side that's going to get their body out of shape as well so as we're approaching this barrel I'm already asking for his shape I'm asking for that nose so right about here he's going to elevate his head like that I don't want him to do that so how we fix that is just what I'm doing right here shape up shape 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 Wait till my leg is past the barrel a little bit. Then I'm going to push that shoulder over. He's gotten a lot better than the other day, but... Ooh, pick up your feet. Past it. Pick him up. And there he raised his head. I'm not going to give him his bit until he gives me his nose. And if I've got to stop him and correct him... There. Right there. If I have to sit there and push his shoulder around and around and around to get that shape that I want and get him soft in the face, then I will. There. That felt pretty good. So what this also does is that really gets that horse really gets that horse to think about finishing that barrel tight. So if you have a horse that's wanting to um, leave their barrel wide, wanting to elevate their head and leave that barrel wide, do a lot of this, push with your outside leg, outside leg, outside rein, and this is where getting control of that horse's shoulder and hip and rib cage comes in very handy. There. Notice he kept his head down, so I'm going to go ahead and give him that and move on. Again, ask the shape up. A little far away from this barrel, but that's fine. This is his tightest barrel. I'm going to keep him a little bit away from that. There. Because this is the barrel he just wants to throw his butt into the ground and really turn. So I don't mind in slow work working this barrel wide. Because this is the one that he's going to want to get around the quickest. At least for him. Some horses is the first, other horses is the third. For this one, it's his second. He loves the second barrel. He loves it so much, he tries to get too close. Okay. Yeah, that's a kitty cat. Now again, on this third barrel, I'm going to ask him to get his shoulder up off that barrel a little bit more than I am his second barrel. Just because the faster he goes, the more he really wants to throw his shoulder into this barrel. So my other two barrels, I may ask him to come in straight. This one, I'm going to ask him to come in and kind of move off and then go forward. Now him lately, we've been working on finishing going straight between the barrels and not going to, say, the imaginary fence. I don't have a fence on my dirt pad, so. <laughs> oh, good. He's at that age where he gets to now really learn what a real barrel pattern is, but this drill, I absolutely love it. It's what I did on Evie after um, our first run down in Texas, because if you haven't seen that vlog, go ahead and watch it. That's the very first saddle that we won. I love it. <laughs> right there, he didn't set up, so I'm going to go ahead and fix it. I never let my horse horses go on. Sit there and push on my hand while we're setting up but anyway that was the show where I won my very first saddle and oh, during that time I did lots and lots of this because the very first run we knocked the barrel 
Evie was ah, 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 ah. right there. He tried to lean into my hand. Evie was not finishing her first because she was elevating her head. So on the dirt pad at Josie's, kind of off by the camping area, I did lots and lots of this between each round because I was bound and determined to come out of there winning something. And I am so glad I did all this. I sit, got out there early, early in the morning and I didn't leave until late at night one night. Just doing lots of this, getting her to think about saying correct. There. So that felt really good. Stay straight. There. That felt good right there. Now again, keeping him a little wide on this backside because I don't mind. Now something else you can add to this, this is what I do at horse shows as well, during uh, exhibitions. Get to this point, oh. Stop and back up. If you have a horse that you really need to reiterate their rate. Come back around, push that shoulder over. Come back and reset. Oh, and stop and back them up. And you can do that each time you do this. Now at a show, if you have a 60 second time limit, you'll probably have to get away with just doing it this way. If you can usually, if you're trotting at a decent pace like him, I'm letting him go a little slow because it is hot outside. Just trot through it. And you can usually get it done within 60 seconds. So I also like to do this at a long trot too, because if they can do it at a long trot, you're definitely going to be able to get a nice tight turn at a lope. There. So here. There, that felt good. I'm not going to be as exaggerated on this barrel because this barrel, I want them to leave it a specific way because the Brazilians, if they've taught us anything, if you're really attentive, if you've taught us anything and you've read Lance Graves' um, post about Brazilians, they've discovered that an arc to the third barrel and around it is much faster than a straight line because they're not really slowing down for that third barrel. Now they're just, they're all around, or wide open all the way around. So I do not mind teaching my horses to stay a little bit wider on that third, but I do want them to finish it tight enough so that we're not, you know, questioning the other side of that second barrel. <laughs> so for loping him, um, I'm not going to do a whole lot of loping today. What I do want to do, and this is something that I feel like a lot of barrel racers kind of um, skip over, because they just want to do the barrel pattern over and over and over. Um, what I like to do, I like to make things as different as possible each time. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to lope up to my rate point, stop and rate, and then we're going to lope, circle, and get tired around that first barrel. He didn't set up there when I asked, so we're going to make the circle again. And don't ever be afraid to have to reset. There's no shame in resetting because your horse didn't listen. You want them to be correct. Oh. Oh. Good. I'm going to ask for that shoulder. Right there, he was fighting my hand a little bit, so we're going to work on that coming around. Stay nice and wide. Make sure he's pulling from that front end. All right, there he was, but I didn't ask him to come in tight like that, so we're going to... He's wanting to run. Lope this a little bit. And slowly start asking him to get a little tighter. Notice how he lost his momentum there. He's pooping too, that's why. That would be why. Okay. Oh. Woohoo! There. 
Okay. That was good. We had miscommunication on our stop, but that's fine. But I am going to... Try to always work on making sure they start on the correct lead after leaving that first barrel. Now remember, this barrel, he likes to turn really tight on. Kind of notice he's wanting to pick up that head and fight that bit, so we're just going to work around it. Nope. Until he relaxes, comes into my hand. I feel him driving from his shoulder and pushing from his hip. He's not doing that just yet. There, right there, now he is. There. You might be able to see it, but it's more of a feel. And that's the one thing that's really frustrating is that you can't really teach feel until your horse does it. Once you feel it, you never forget. Okay. There. Oh. <clears throat> there. Okay. His biggest problem is he gets very lazy when it comes to the lead change. Ah, give me your nose. He likes to just kind of drop his momentum and just get lazy. Same thing with his third barrel. This is his laziest barrel. So I don't mind staying wide. I'm not going to finish this one tight. I'm just going to keep him out here and keep him thinking about moving forward. There. Oh. There. Let's go ahead and just kind of do a easy little breeze through see how he feels, and then correct whatever issues he may have at a trot. So that didn't feel too bad. Um, what I didn't like was I asked for his nose to the second barrel. And if you notice, he didn't really give it. He just kind of stuck it out there a little bit. So I'm just going to work on getting that nose down. Like right there. And this is what I was talking about over there when they don't want to give their nose. I just gotta keep doing this until they give it and quit quit fighting that bit. Because this is just him saying no. He doesn't want to do it, but He's got to learn, he's getting lazy. He's got to learn that this isn't something he gets to say no on. It's entirely his decision whether he wants to fight that bit or not. 
And I'm just gonna hold that pressure, it's starting to feel better. Like right there, he tried to duck in some. And he's like his mother. Now he's starting to get angry because he's not getting his way. He's like his mother and she was the exact same way. There. Now he's starting to... Oh, there. Notice I didn't stop him immediately. I gave in his face, but he had to be able to maintain that all the way around before, before he was able to stop. I wasn't going to sit there and give it to him immediately because then he didn't really learn anything. Once he realized, oh, this is so much easier, then I gave him a chance to rest. But what made it easier and for him to understand that it was easier is I did give him his nose a little bit and he held that spot all on his own. So he'll get there. He's only three. There. Oh. That was good. I like that. We're going to leave that at that. He thought about it. He learned something. And we turned on his brain a little bit. He has a gelding. This is why I prefer mares. Geldings are just a little bit lazy. They're very dramatic about the little things. The mares just kind of give you sass. And they're a lot more fun. At least to me. A lot of people like geldings. I prefer mares. He's the only gelding I'll probably keep. Just because he is me as one and only baby. But anyway... I hope you liked this training video. If you did, go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share it with your friends who you think will benefit from uh, this drill that I did today. This is just one drill of many that there are. Um, I'll probably go ahead and do some more, but this is my favorite in regards to getting their head down, learning feet placement, and getting them to really use that hind quarter, especially on the back side, and then leave an, an, in a nice straight line to the second barrel or third. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you all in the next one. And until then, work hard and stay misfits. Let's go. Yeah. I'm like an addict. Ooh, I gotta have it. I ain't even playing.